Well, good afternoon, everyone. Happy Monday. Um, oh, we've got the UK on board, so it's uh, a little later than afternoon over there. Um, <laughs> Lori Coder says, thanks for jumping on this, Dr. Morgan. Well, you know, see, she knows what I'm going to say already. Um, so there was a post, and I, I will say that the person that posted this on the Friends of Judy Morgan, I want to thank them because um, they didn't immediately jump on and say, oh, did you hear this? Or, uh, you know, we should all stop feeding this food. Or like she, was, she asked a question, and her question was, does anybody know if this is true? that's the way to approach these things rather than impugn a company without having answers and um you know first of all there's this little thing called slander that you can get in trouble for um but again uh you consider the source when you see things that are bad mouthing another company consider the source of what group it's being discussed in um who might have started the rumor potential rumor or whatever so the question that was posed on friends of judy morgan dvm was has anybody seen this post about small batch pet food which is a company that we like it's one of the ones on my list of foods that i would and that, that i have fed my pets do feed my pets um and the person said well did you know that small batch uh, uh, the meats that they source are fed GMO grains and it all goes down the food chain. So if what you're feeding your, your dog um, is eating GMO grains, then that's going to cause problems for your pet as well. Okay, well, first of all, um, it would be nice if everybody in the world could, have feed, could afford to feed grass-fed, organic, perfect meat to themselves and their animals. Not everyone can afford that. So let's get off our high horse to begin with, with, you know, like everybody has their level that they work at that they can do. So we're not going to, uh, you know, wag our finger at people who can't feed their animals everything organic and perfect. Second of all, if someone is going to post something like that about a company, then let's see proof of that. And by the way, when this person was asked for proof or asked for anything to back that up, crickets. We got crickets. Everybody got crickets. So what did the smart people who really wanted to know do? They reached out to the company. They reached out to Small Batch and said, hey, did you know that this information is all over social media? Can you uh, lay this to rest? Can you assure us? Can you, uh, I mean, maybe, maybe it's true. We don't know. But how do you get the truth? You go to the source. And this company has been very transparent from the beginning. So this is the answer that came from um, a customer specialist at Small Batch. It says, we greatly appreciate you reaching out to us for more information on this, as this rumor is simply that, a rumor, and very much untrue. We pride ourselves on transparency, and this company has been good about that, and are happy to provide you with some more insights straight from the source. For starters, we want to note that we do not make a non-GMO claim on our proteins. However, we do make one for our produce. In terms of our protein, we want to shed some light on our poultry farm par partner, Pittman Family Farms in California. Some of our turkey comes from Pittman Family Farms where they make their own GMO-free feed that they offer to all of their chickens, turkeys, and ducks. This is in addition to the free grazing they do, foraging on things they naturally do, such as insects and grasses. We also spot purchase from Dystel Turkey as well, and they are, in fact, non-GMO project verified. As far as our rabbit goes, we recently chose to discontinue using the domestic rabbit we sourced from Iowa for years, as they were unfortunately purchased by a pharmaceutical company. We, when searching for a rabbit supplier that could supply our demand, 
as well as meet our standards for humane and responsible practices, our options were limited to sourcing overseas. We chose a rabbit source from France because of their strict animal welfare policies and their strict ban on GMO crops, which by the way, many pet food companies are sourcing rabbit from France because it's cleaner and better. Unfortunately, Labeling non-GMO and making claims when it comes to proteins is something that the Department of Agriculture makes very difficult for pet food companies, and I understand that. And for this reason, this is something we have not pursued simply because we have close relationships with the family farms we source from and maintain relationships with these farms due to their shared standards and morals surrounding responsible farm practices and humane treatment of their animals which includes providing them with non-GMO feed. We thank you again for taking the time to speak with us directly about this. Please don't be shy if you have any other questions or concerns. Take care. So, when you see that post popping up on social media feeds, please set people straight. Tell them that that is a rumor that is being propagated by people who have no clue what they're talking about um, and that if you ever have a question about food from any pet food company you need to reach out to that pet food company if you have a question about a product produced by a company a supplement produced by a company you should reach out to the company don't just start bad mouthing them this is this is horrible this this kind of thing uh, it's sort of like the whole grain-free DCM debacle, which, by the way, has raised its head yet again. Lisa Freeman is at work again, publishing articles for VCA Hospitals, which is probably the biggest chain in America. Came out in one of their magazines today, uh, and the uh, small uh, pet store retailers are going crazy over it. I saw a post in the uh, small pet store retail world group, um, you know, she's at it again. And uh, I think it's shameless promotion for big pet food companies with a lot of lobbying money. And um, unfortunately, oh shoot, I don't know what I just did to my camera. Um, shoot. Unfortunately, uh, the small mom and pop pet stores are the ones who pay the price on this. And um, it's a shame. Uh, because we are taking pets who are eating very high quality diets and changing them over to very poor quality diets uh, for no reason. And it's, it's pretty horrible. So um, misinformation in the pet industry. Uh, Gwen, I don't know if you're watching. I'm not watching comments, but I think I screwed up Instagram. So you may have to repost this. Anyway, um, Okay, yeah, Smallbot is an amazing company. Um, Dr. Morgan and I also support uh, Susan Thixton's work in helping everyone know the best pet foods. Yes, truthaboutpetfood.com, and that's Dr. Lori Kocher who's uh, just said that. So, um, okay, everyone, that's my rant for today. I've got another rant, but I'm not sure I'm going to do that one on Facebook Live. So, um, everybody have a wonderful afternoon. It is time to go feed donkeys and hennies and horses and chickens. And it's a lovely day. A little chilly. We spent the day filming at the office. So I've been talking all day. Everybody have a great evening. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.